What is going on, everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. Happy Monday. Actually, wait, it's not Monday. It's Tuesday. It surely does feel like a Monday, though. Either way, we have three undervalued stocks to break down in this video, two of which I own. And the first one that we're going to break down, I just bought today so we have a lot to cover guys hit the like button make sure to subscribe check out the patreon down below if you're interested and with that being said cheers let's dive right into it so the first stock on the list which again is right here i just bought it today is alta beauty ticker symbol ulta and the stock right now is at 380 bucks per share down from the 605 dollar level that it was at back in the middle of March. We're talking less than three months ago, guys. The stock was over 600 bucks. Now we're under 400 bucks. In other words, we're down about 36, 37% from the recent highs and we're deep in a bear market. So for me, guys, whenever we're seeing stocks at all time highs, I'm always fishing for deals. And in this case, in this video, again, we're going to go over stocks that are not at all time highs. They're pretty far off, right? And the charts look pretty good on these stocks. The fundamentals are strong. And I mean, look, we can look here at the three year chart. It looks pretty decent on Ulta and on the max chart. It looks really good. Does it not? I mean, look, we're above the 50 moving average here, clearly holding an uptrend. And Ulta is a stock that I've talked about for years on this channel and I haven't had the opportunity to own them. I actually wanted to buy them a couple of years ago, missed the entry, the stock went up like crazy, and well, I was patient, and here we are, guys. I got filled at about $382 per share with my starter position today, and I'm planning on buying even more. So Ulta Beauty, guys, is pretty undervalued here, in my humble opinion, especially compared to to its peers let me actually show you this right here and we'll break down some numbers so right off the bat guys Ulta's market cap is 18.45 billion dollars which is above the specialty retail average that's not a big deal uh, which the specialty retail average is 13.6 billion dollars and what is a big deal is the fact that the PE ratio is super low the price to earnings ratio trailing 12 months is 14.6 guys that is very low and the industry average is 23.5 so whenever i'm looking at an individual stock of course i like looking at the numbers compared to its peers right which in this case Alta's trading way cheaper on a trailing 12 month pe basis and on a five-year average basis, which the five-year average PE is 28.6, and the specialty retail average is 30. And their PEG ratio is a 2.19 five-year projected, which is less than half of the industry average of 5.1. You guys can see and look, pretty much all these metrics are under the industry average. Price to sales, price to book or um, excuse me price to cash flow right price to uh yeah price to cash flow trailing 12 months and most recent quarter well under um well i guess the um industry average is negative 16 on the price to cash flow we'll ignore that for the most recent quarter but you guys get where i'm going at here right the company is cheap and this is simply a valuation play for me i'm not looking to hold Alta for a decade or two decades. I'm looking to hold it until it gets back to a reasonable valuation, whether that's at 500 bucks a share, 550, 600 bucks. Then I'm looking to exit the position. Simple as that, guys. Whether it takes a year, a couple of years, I'm comfortable holding it three to five years. Uh, but this is not like a super mega long term play, like a 10, 20 year play or something like that. This is mostly. Um, you know, a valuation play. I think it's too cheap. The company's still growing pretty nicely on the top line. They're a leader in the beauty space. And most importantly, guys, they're still expanding. They're now expanding into Mexico. They can expand into Canada at some point in the future. That is definitely um, on the table for Ulta. And beauty is, I'm not a beauty guy. I mean, look at me. I'm not the most beautiful guy. I don't wear makeup. 
But I asked my wife, I asked a bunch of people, and obviously I pay attention. I'm not a, a, an idiot that doesn't look at anything, right? Beauty is an in-person experience, right? People go to Ulta, they like to see things, touch things, and see it in person, right? Try things on their hands, right? They're doing uh, the makeup on their hands, all the different, um, you know, the, the different colors, the shades, the this, the that. So I think Ulta is a nice valuation play where we're at now. Stock number two, which I'm not in, but I'm looking at it, is Lululemon. And talk about destruction, guys. This stock is down 2.7% on the day, but it's down way more than that over the past couple of months. We're talking 42% in the red. So Lululemon, of course, makes phenomenal clothes, very comfortable, no doubt about it. In fact, I'm wearing a Lululemon shirt right now. I love it. It's awesome. It's super comfortable. Um, and the company is seeing a lot of competition, right? The company is seeing a ton of competition. There's a lot of people coming in, undercutting them, um, you know, essentially copying their products in a way, maybe doing a bit of a spin on their products. And Lululemon, guys, they've been struggling. Their sales have actually, I mean, they're, they're still growing, but their sales growth has slowed down. Let me actually pull it up here on Safari, and I'll show you guys. And like I said, there's a lot of competition. And who knows, if we get into a recession, tough economic times, the risk with Lulu is, well, not many people or not as many people are going to be interested in buying very expensive t-shirts or pants or this or that they're going to opt for cheaper options that is a you know a serious possibility here with lululemon and we'll see if that plays out guys and let me actually see here um can i get the revenue growth or the the numbers here the financials i'm pulling them up here guys Give me a second, smash that like button, make sure to subscribe so you guys can see here the tremendous growth that Lululemon has seen from 2019 to 2023. You guys can see they grew revenues from $3.9 billion in 2019. These are the annual, actually no, these are the quarterly numbers. Um, no, actually, no, excuse me. These are the annual numbers. So $3.9 billion of revenue in 2019 to now $9.6 billion as of 2023, but you'll notice the year over year growth has slowed down. We're not seeing the 50, the 60%, the whatever uh, year over year revenue growth numbers anymore. They're slowing down. And I've been seeing that Lulu isn't innovating as much as they used to. They need to innovate and get back into um, just creating different new products new lines of clothing, whatever it may be. So I've been hearing that. That might be dampering their valuation a little bit. And let me actually show you some key statistics here. Lulu isn't nearly as cheap as Ulta, in my opinion, yet they are different companies. I get it. Lulu is still growing more than Ulta, so I guess it does, um, you know, it does need a higher valuation or it does, you know, Warner a higher valuation. Let me actually pull up the key stats here on Lululemon. We can see their price to earnings ratio uh, trailing 12 months is 24.8. That's a little bit under the industry average, but the five-year P, the five-year average is a 52, which is well above the industry average of 29. So on a five-year basis, Lulu is still pretty expensive PE, uh, PE wise. And we can see here some of the other metrics PEG ratio next five years or five years projected, it's 2.2. That is under the industry average. Price to cash flow is well under the industry average uh, for the trailing 12 months. Price to sales is above the industry average, almost at a four. Um, the industry average is 3.64. So I like Lululemon, guys. I think it's a great business. I love their products, but I'm not in the stock quite yet but I'm watching it. I think it's a decent value here. Maybe not super undervalued, but in the short term, guys, I'm keeping my eyes on it. And if it does fall down even more, let me pull it up here on Thinkorswim. If Lulu comes down to the low mid 200s, maybe after earnings, which we have earnings coming up here in about a week, if the stock does come down a ton more, I'll probably initiate a position, but there's risks. Again, competition, 
recession potentially would knock this company out like Mike Tyson, right? Maybe not to bank, obviously not the bankruptcy. That's not what I'm saying, but it's going to hurt their sales for sure. But it is a company worth watching. And, and if they do start innovating a bunch more, this is going to be one that I'm going to be buying, uh, you know. And the next one here is Nike, ticker symbol NKE, which I do own. I bought this about a month ago in the high 80s, I think $88, $89, bought a little bit more in the low 90s. And I'm pretty much break even on Nike. And this is a stock that I love. I mean, this is a brand that I love. And when I'm buying Nike stock, guys, I'm not necessarily buying it as a valuation play, although I do think it's a decent value. It's not really a valuation play like Ulta, although it is in a sense, but I'm mostly buying the brand, right? When I'm buying a stock and I want to hold it for five, 10 plus years, which in this case, unlike Ulta, in this case with Nike, I want to hold it for more than 5, 10 years. Again, Ulta is more of a one to three year hold, more of a valuation play. Nike's got a killer brand. We love, I love the brand. Pretty much everybody across the entire earth, the entire globe um, loves the brand. And they've been seeing a bit of uh, struggles, right? The, the growth in China is simply not there anymore. They're slowing down growth in China and other regions as well. I'm pretty sure in their last quarter, their last earnings report, North America was the only region that saw growth. I think 7%, if I remember correctly, year over year. But yeah, man, Nike is one that I own. It's trading pretty low off the highs. Yeah, I mean, the stock's down 50%. I mean, this is nuts. The stock was at 180. Now we're at 90. We're down 50%. And on the max chart, we look pretty decent. Sure, this could come down a little bit more. And I welcome it to come down to 70, 80 bucks. I'll be buying a ton of Nike at that spot. And again, I'm buying the brand here at a pretty decent price. And I'm looking to hold long term. And you could be like, oh, Nike's woke. Nike's this. Nike's that. Trust me, guys, in my opinion, my opinion, the brand will prevail. Same thing with Disney. Sure, it could be woke, this, that, blah, blah, whatever, but the brand will win in the long term. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that's personally what I think. And looking at some key stats here on Nike, the market cap is $138 billion, which for the brand Call me crazy, but I think that is nuts. I think this should be at least a 250 to 300, 350 billion dollar market cap, which we'll see if it gets there. Time will tell, but that's where we're at right now. The P ratio trailing 12 months is about a 27, which is right in line with the industry average. The P ratio in the last five years is a bit higher at 40, considering the stock price was a lot higher a couple of years ago. That's going to you know, bring uh, that average up. The peg ratio five year projected is, is at 2.01, less than, uh, less, yeah, less than the 2.34 industry average. And let me see here, guys. Price to cash flow, trailing 12 months, 23, well under the 34 industry average. Price to sales, we can see 2.71 trailing 12 months, which is well under the 3.6 industry average. And we can go on and on, guys. We can go on and on about Nike. But again, to keep it simple, I'm buying the brand at a decent valuation here. And I'm looking to average down if it comes down even more. So what do you guys think about these three stocks and this longer style video? I'm trying to potentially bring these longer, a little bit more in depth style videos back to the channel. What do you guys think about that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And full disclosure, I own Nike. I own Ulta. I do not own Lululemon, but I'm considering it at some point fairly soon here. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, follow along for more, and check out my Patreon if you guys want to be a part of the Discord, see my charts and ideas throughout the day, throughout the week. And if you guys want to see me build out my Patreon private portfolio, which again, We've been making some crazy moves in there. Check it out. Link down below. The QR code's right here. Or just go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon. And with that being said, cheers. I'll catch you in the next one.